What's up, everybody? Happy, uh, happy Wednesday. Uh, this class is starting now. Let's get it going. People are getting excited. They're screaming. Yeah, here we go. That's right. I'm gonna make my finish up my coffee, and then we get started and we kick things off and we're ready to go. Ba boom. Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you drank your coffee this morning and you're all gassed up and ready to go. So let's jump in. Julian's back. What's up? Back on top as well. Nice job, Julian. Lolly's in the house. What's up, Lolly? Gertie's in the house. Uh, who else is in the house? Edgar's in the house. My man. Fiza's in the house. Carlos. What's up? Judith is there. Albina's back. The crew is here. The, the crew. Squad goals. Uh, Mudasser's in the house. What's up, Mudasser? Out of patient to be in the class though. Well, I'm sorry, Modassa. Sometimes we go, I'm, I'm, I'm only a few minutes late today because I know you guys like a little startup music, a little dance while you're waiting for things to get going. Beatrice, what's up? Vlad, my man is back. Sweetness. Dale, what's up? Dale's king. Muad, I'm here, man. I'm here. I'm right here. I'm ready to go. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, Lila, hello. How are you doing? Benam, what's up, brother? Hassan, how you doing? crew is here there we go a few more oh here we go Lecho Samuel what's up my brother Lorena in Holland it's very late in Holland I appreciate that uh, Zineb what's up oh oh that's the name from where Shad Shadil Shadil okay no, I'm sorry I can't say your name man but and you're from Abdo where where is Abdo uh, everyone else doing down put that cookie down who's got a cookie I don't have a cookie Sharar, Shararir, or sorry, I can't say any of your names correctly. I apologize. Okay, let's get into this. Let's do this. Let me give you this document and let's jump into what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the other week, a few weeks ago, possibly last week, we talked about using because for uh, reasons. And today I'm going to hit you with something a little bit different. So I'm going back to the grammar now. I'm going to smash you with some grammar. So here we go. There's the link. It should be available to everybody on the web. So please open that up and make a copy of that. And we're going to jump into it. So let's go. Let me hit you with a question of the day. And the question of the day is this. It's a pretty easy one. It's this. Why are you learning English? So let's take a look at learning English, shall we? Let's see what that looks like. Online learning English. There's some pretty funny advertisements about it. The question is for you, why are you learning English? Like, what is the main reason? What's your motivation? And this will lead in perfectly to what we're going to talk about. So there's some English there, learning. Oh, hold on, let me put that up there so everyone can see. There we go. So we got English, yeah, learning English, it's time. Ooh, uh, there we go, those keep calm from, you know, World War II. Those ones are kind of funny. Keep calm and learn English, sure. Why are you guys, what's your motivation for learning English? Let's talk about that before we jump into uh, what we're actually going to work on today. Hello, Em. How you doing? You like my dance? Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so tell us, what's your motivation? Why are you learning English? Work? Travel? Um, I don't know, maybe you're just interested in language. That languages, that would be an interesting one. I'm not very good at second languages. I'm barely capable at English, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just not that good. But So tell us, what is your, oh, here we go, cat in the hat. Wisdom, have you guys read this book? It changed my life. It was really a life changer. It's called The Cat in the Hat. And it's not just about cats or hats. Lolly, I'm learning English to talk to you, Ken. Thanks, Lolly. I like your style. Don't change. Study. Study what? Study why? Study who? Study how? Give us, give us a little more. Let's keep that Dr. Seuss up there. I kind of like that one. Oh, there's life lessons from Dr. Seuss. Oh, there we go. There you go. Five. Let's see. It's not just about cats and hats. There's some stuff you can learn from Dr. Seuss. Uh, here we go, Vlad's got one. My initial name was immigration, but now it's just inertia now. Okay, there you go. If you had an aim, but now it's gone, now you're kind of just sitting there and something to do, that could be good. Maybe you want to hang out with a cool international community like we got here, people from all around the world. That's pretty awesome as well, not a bad idea. Uh, what else we got here? Samuel, I want to improve my English for my job. I'm a receptionist in a hotel. Okay, very nice. So a little bit of work related. Good for that. Uh, good for travel, right? You meet a lot of people who are traveling, a lot of tourists, sightseers, and you need to help them. That's a good opportunity to practice your English. Very nice. Zineb, work and travel because I'm working as a travel agent. There we go. Okay, so there we go. More work. It's more international these days, right? It's not, it's, it's, you need to learn English for a lot of international jobs or tourist jobs or tourism jobs, those kinds of things. Second, English. Great. 
Uh, Hassan, have a couple of competitive exams. So I have a couple of competitive exams, maybe some English exam, maybe a little IELTS action, maybe a little FCE, TOEFL, something like that. Yes, that definitely useful. Ziad, because I live in an, A-N, uh, English-speaking country, so I guess I have to learn English. Yes, you're probably, that's the correct guess. Otherwise, I won't be able to communicate with people. Yes. Okay, so there you go. If you are living abroad, if you're one of those cool people who's challenging themselves to live in another country, good for you. It's not easy sometimes, especially when you don't speak the same language, right? Uh, Dale, when I started learning English, it was about honing. Ooh, good word. Let's add a word, shall we? Uh, honing is a word which we use in English for kind of like making better, improving. Just think of it as improving. So let's add that word. So vocab, that's a good word. Hone your skills. Let me put that one in there. Hone your skills. That's a nice combination. You could use that in an academic English test. It's a collocation which just means make your skills better. So let me blow that up a little bit. There we go. You hone your skills. Uh, we'll call it the collocation, and just means you know, improve your abilities. Nice one, good one. And let's do that. Let's get into some vocab in here as well. Very nice. Uh, what else we got here? Let's go back to the cat and hat. Uh, all right. So next person. What else we got here? Do, 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 do. Uh, because I'm, I'm living L-I-V-I-N-G in the U.S. and I want to improve my writing as well. Maybe we can focus a little more on writing in the, one of the next class to do a little bit more of that. We've done it in the past, but it's always good to do it. Maybe we can do different types of writing. Learning English for pleasure. Some people just like languages, maybe communicating. Uh, Gertie, all caps, I decided to learn English because I love to connect with different people. That's a good reason. That's, a, that's an advantage of speaking an international language is that you get to meet some pretty awesome people who also speak the same language. Really awesome. Uh, underrated, right? When you go abroad, you get to meet people from around the world, like some of the schools that I work at or other teachers. Pretty awesome. Uh, I want to do academic writing. How can I improve my English? You could take some classes, Vinny. Uh, it's tricky. I mean, it's it's a process, right? You need to jump into a school, maybe do an IELTS class, the FCE class, where they really focus on the writing a little bit more because you need to learn how to write in English. You need to get rid of the common mistakes you make. You need to improve the vocabulary that you're doing. And you also need to learn how to write a good essay, with which gets you a lot of points if you're doing an IELTS or an FCE. So get in a class probably is the best answer. Carlos, to be honest, I'm studying English to apply for. Uh, Canadian residents. Very nice, Carlos. Welcome. Welcome to Canada anytime, buddy. The secret entrance into Canada is between the maple tree and the grizzly bear cave. It's like right in the middle there. So you just got to find that one. Uh, hey, Obina, what's up? Where's Fedor? Uh, I learn English because I study it. Study it. Don't use English again. Just say study it at university. Good. All right, let's do a couple more and then I'm going to jump into what we're doing here. Uh, I'm learning English because I want to continue my education in an AN English country and I have to take part in an AN IELTS exam. You better fix up those articles. You got to use those A's and those N's, uh, Scherer. Uh, but let's put that in there. You did have some good vocab in there. Take part in. That's a good one. That's a phrasal verb. Uh, take part in something, which basically means participate or join. Easy word, join. Good one, nice phrasal verb. Use more of those, uh, sh shariar, shariar, sorry, I can't say your name. Use more phrasal verbs uh, that will help you with your exam and fix up those A's and those N's and those thus, because that's going to be a problem. Uh, okay, cool. Let's do one or two more. Uh, Mudasar, I was originally intrigued, interested. Um, in the, in the English language, I want to increase my opportunities to get a good job in my personal life or yep, okay, or in my career. Intrigue, good word. Uh, be intrigued. So I'll use it as, uh, generally we use it as an adjective. Uh, be in, I was intrigued and usually with something or somebody. So I was intrigued. Basically interested, be interested in. But we use with. Intrigued with, interested in. Unfortunately, it's just different. All right, very nice. Let's go and jump into the next one. Yeah, OK, I'm going to jump into the next. So let's go back up here. This is what we're going to talk about today. So today, we're going to use this. So the, the answer to this question of the day was so. 
And this is exactly what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started. Uh, why are you learning English? So I can get a better job, so I can meet interesting people, so I can pass an exam. So this is exactly the point we're going to look at. This will help you if you're doing IELTS or any kind of academic English. And if you just want to speak better English, this will also be a good lesson. So here we go. This, you, know how, you know how I like to do it. I want you guys to finish the sentence. I will give you a sentence. I want you to look at the following sentences, read them, and then finish them with your own idea. So let me put that in there just so it's clear. So starting with this, here we go. So I'm going to give you an idea, and I want you to finish that sentence with your own idea. So here we go. Here's number one. Oops. No, come on. Get in there. Here we go. So here we go. Here's your sentence. It was the worst night of my life. Oh my god. What could have possibly happened? So I decided to. So this is your sentence, number one. It was the worst night of my life. So I decided to. So you have to use that and you have to use so. That's the key word we're using today. So here we go. Lolly, great answer. So I decided to take a nap. Problem solved. Take a nap, wake up, everything's gone. Everything's okay. Dale, it was the worst night of my life, so I decided not to think about it in the future. Okay, that could be okay. Judith, it was the worst night of my life, so I decided to not go to. Usually after a verb, sometimes, most of the time we have a preposition, go to, go with, go for. So don't forget that one, go to that place again. Good, there we go. It was the worst night of my life. Let's, let's see what happens if we Google the worst night of my life. I hope nothing bad happens when I do this, but it, bad things usually happen. Let's see what happens. What do we got here? We just, okay, no, nothing really amazing. Anything? Pub crawl in Berlin? That sounds like the best night of my life. That doesn't sound like a bad thing. What else could be the worst night of my life? Eh, no, okay, this is not what I thought it would be. Let's just keep that in the background, because I kind of like a pub crawl in Berlin, and they got good beer there. So what else we got here? So I decided to hide, hide away, could be. Decided to drink some beer, also a great idea. Lolly always has the great ideas. I decided to go out and walk under the sky. Calm yourself down with a little sky, under the sky walk. Okay, that could be good. That's an easy one, let's get into some more. Let's start, let's take a look at number two. Oh, here we go, Am I, what, a, what a wonderful one. Do your best to finish this one. Of course, uh, here we go. Uh, my mommy and daddy came together on a magical night. As a result, finish that sentence, okay? So go ahead and jump into number two. I'll catch up with the other people doing number one, but go ahead and jump into number two. Uh, so number one, it was the worst night of my life, so I decided uh, to think where I made the mistake. Sir Ken, uh, that after the where, it's not a question, so we don't use did. So we just make a normal sentence where I made in the past, because the first part was in the past, where I made a mistake. Brahim, I decided not to. Usually it's the other way, it's not to eat instead of to not eat. Dale's on it, my mommy and daddy came together on a magical night. As a result, you could amuse yourself with these hilarious jokes. Huh? As a result, as a result you could amuse yourself with these hilarious jokes. I don't get it. Is that is that like because you're funny? I don't really, I'm sorry, Dale, I didn't get that one. But anyways, okay, your mommy and daddy, and then, then we got Dale, we got little Dale, there we go. Gertie, it was the worst night, okay, still on number one, it was the worst night of my life, so I decided to call my best friend and go dancing all night. That's, that's a pretty good answer. That's pretty close, Gertie, you almost had it there. That was a really good one. Faiza, it was the worst night of my life, don't forget it's of my life, so I decided to eat all what was all of all of what was in the fridge pretty good answer brahim's got the logical answer as a result i was born and vlad's got another logical one they gave birth to me all of those are good uh dude and my mommy and daddy came together on a magical night as a result i was born after nine months very logical again elena so i decided to fight okay i'm guessing that's number one uh lolly as a result they are in love again Oh, because of Lolly. The joy of Lolly in their lives made them happy again. Okay, that's possible. Uh, Angela, it was the worst night of my life, so I decided to do exercise during the day. Hmm, exercise made it all better, right? 
Ziad, as a result, there we go, I was waiting for a Ziad to answer one of these ones. As a result, comma, I decided to leave them alone and go to my friend's house. For number two? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, I got it. I decided to leave. Okay, I was thinking about the night you were born, but that, that makes sense too. Mudasser, it was the worst, the worst night of my life. I decided to do... I decided to meditate. You can just say do. Um, I decided to meditate to get out of that problem. Good. Okay. There we go. Hello, Hamed from Iran. Come on in and finish that sentence. Go back up to where it says smart English, and you can finish that sentence with your own ideas. So let's jump into another one. Here we go. I like I like a little bit. Sentence number two is difficult for you. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess a little bit. I don't know. I guess it happens. Just it's just for fun. So don't 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 worry too much if you can't answer it or don't have a good day. If you can't answer it, no worries. Not a big daddy. Not a big daddy. Not a big deal. Duh. Okay. Next. Number three. Let's jump into number three. So here we go. Uh, you know I you know Kent likes disastrous situations. So I always have like something that like, crazy that's going to happen. It's just kind of fun for me. So I said what a person should never ever say to their partner. So basically my boyfriend or my girlfriend, I said something, oh my God, why did I say that? And he said, I said something that I should never, never, never say to my partner. As a consequence, what happened? What happened to me or what happened to my partner? Okay, so there's the situation. It's like you say something to your partner and you're like, oh my God, why did I say that? That was the stupidest thing ever to say. So I said what a person should never ever say to their partner. As a consequence, what happened? What happened because you said that? Give me an answer for number three. As a consequence, I no longer, here we go, here it comes. <coughs> Angela, I said what a person should never say to their partner. As a consequence, my partner left me. That's the one I was looking for. As a consequence, comma, don't forget your comma there, Angela. Uh, Zineb, as a result, my husband is having magical nights now. Oh, there we go. I think, Zineb, I think you won it. I think you got the answer of the day. I got to put it in the first spot. So, Zineb, you have won the answer of the day. It's a, it's a new contest in Ken's class. So, let's put it up there. Answer of the day. And I think the first part of that was uh, this one. Here we go. It was the part three, I said what I should never ever say to my partner. And then, as a result, my husband is now having magical nights. So boom, congratulations, uh, Zineb, you, you nailed, or somebody nailed the, the answer of the day. Pun intended for that one. Boom. There we go. Okay, there we go. Back to this one. What do we got here? Brahim, as a consequence, we got into hot water. Maybe you got into hot water, right, Brahim? Maybe not we. Uh, I broke Lila. I broke his heart. How many hearts does he have? Does he have multiple hearts? I would just say heart, no S. Lali, as a consequence, we are not friends anymore. Okay, there we go. Broken down. Vladimir, single object. Why do you use plural for number three? Number three, where? Where did I use plural? Single object. Why do you use plural? Why do you use a plural subject for number three? I said what a person should never say to their partner. Uh, you mean their partner? Is that what you mean? I'm not sure what the question is, no. Vladimir, can you I'd say that one more time in another way? Plural subject, where's my plural subject? Was it for that answer? Uh, no, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, buddy. Give me another question there. Uh, what else we got here? So, Dale, I said what a person should never say to their partner. As a consequence, I have to stay at my friend's house. Boom. Done. Judith, I said what a person should never say. As a consequence, they never invited me to their party again. His, heart, his partner's heart has been broken. Or maybe was broken would be better because the first part is in the past. So maybe the second part should also be in the past. Uh, what else we got here? Zineb, actually, it was for the second sentence, but it <laughs> but it's okay if it works for the last one. It does. Uh, it does. I think it works better, actually, for the third sentence. It's kind of funny that way. Okay, cool. I think we got it. Thomas, what's up, buddy? Welcome. Join in. Jump in here. Okay. I think we got that. Good. As a consequence, I have to take the risk. What does it mean, take the risk? Take a chance to do something. I'm alone in life. There we go. 
Okay, good. Next one. Now I'm going to give you another one. And while I'm doing this, we don't talk anymore like we used to. That's true. Now you just listen to music, right, Marjorie? All right, so number four, look at this one. And I want you, of course, I'm underlining all the words that we're going to be using today. But I want you to also look at the, the grammar difference between some of the words. We're going to talk about it soon. So let's jump into number four and finish that one for me. Uh, something a little more positive, right? Not all. Kent doesn't only do crazy stuff. He also does positive stuff. So as a consequence of my hard work. So because of your hard work, what happened? What was the result? Oh, let me put that one in the chat. As a consequence of all my hard work. So maybe you're working really hard in life or in school, you know, or in any relationship or anything like that. What happened because of your hard work as a consequence? Uh, as a consequence of my hard work, I got a promotion. Good for you, Faisa. Is that, did that really happen? It's good. Viva did. What else we got? Uh, hold on, we got a question here. How to pronounce every word like every experienced American? What do I study? Study TV, GMT. That's the best advice I can give you. Or go live in America. And if you can't do that, watch TV a lot. Uh, TV can be good for pronunciation. Uh, I've seen some students who just watch TV and do video games a lot, and their, their pronunciation picks up pretty good. So that's an idea. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Ali, my salary was increased. Nice, good one, good result. Muad, I get this semester with good marks. I passed, P-A-S-S-E-D. I passed this semester with good marks. Angela, as a consequence of my hard work, I am the president. I am the president. There's only one president, so we use the for that one. Uh, I am the president. Oh, same answer. Oh, best friends, Lolly and Angela, same answer, best friends. Lila, my salary boots. Salary boots? I'm not sure. I'm <laughs> not sure about it. You might have to say that one again, Leela. Dale, as a consequence of my hard work, I am more than comfortable when it comes to bringing papers. As a consequence of my hard work, I'm more than comfortable when it comes to bringing papers. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get that one. Ziad, as a consequence of my hard work, I'm suffering from insomnia. That could definitely happen if you work too hard. Amirara Salam, as a consequence of my hard work, comma, I nailed my exams. Ooh, like it. I'm going to add that one to the list. That's a good word. Uh, nail something, nail your exams, for example, just means do really well. So I'm going to put this here. I'm just going to put something today, okay? So nail something means do well. Do well. Succeed, you know? Uh, if you say, I nailed my test. I nailed my driving test. I nailed my English test. That means you, bang, you put a hammer in it and you did really well. You kicked butt. Nice one. Good word. Okay, cool. Let's go back up here. Next one. Maybe let's jump into the next one. One more. Pun didn't click. Yeah, sorry, Dale. I didn't, didn't catch that one. Uh, what else we got here? Okay. I think we're good. All right, I'm going to jump ahead because I see a lot of answers coming in. I want to get a few more in here before we jump ahead. So let me give you, which one should I give you? Uh, let's, let's get a little philosophical. Let's do this one, and then we'll finish. Uh, no, let's do this one. The world is coming to me. Yeah, this one. OK, I like, I like end of the world scenarios. You know, Walking Dead, that kind of stuff. So take a look at number six, please, and take, finish that one. The world was coming to an end. You know, normal stuff. The world was coming to an end. Thus, what did you do? What happened? OK, so give an answer for this one. Let me go back and catch a few more of the other ones. Uh, let's go back up here. All right, after Amir, uh, Vinny had one. I emerged, D. Uh, emerged the winner of the race. That was a good one. I, as a consequence of my hard work, I have a pain in, in my back. That'll work. As a consequence of my hard work, I was able to fulfill my dreams of traveling, my dream of traveling the world in search of new experiences. Ooh, very nice, Matthias. Uh, let's add that one. That was a good combination of words. Fulfill your dream. It's kind of like succeed in your dream, but we don't say succeed in your dream. We say fulfill. Fulfill a dream. Nice combination. Mm. Fulfill your dream. Reach, reach a goal, basically. Achieve. Achieve a goal. That's another, another way to explain that. I 
achieve a goal. Fulfill your dream. Okay, and a big goal. Let's do that. Achieve a big goal. Nice one. All right, let's go on. Next one, number six. Let's finish that one here. Let's do a few there. Number six, uh, the world was coming to an end. Thus, uh, thus, I continued studying English. I'm sure that wouldn't happen, Ollie, but great lie, like it. Thus, put a big T on thus and then a comma. Don't forget your comma. Thus, and again, because you can see I'm using thus at the beginning of the sentence, so we want a period and then a big T and then a comma. Thus, na 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 na. I kept praying, okay? Thus, I was trying to enjoy spending as much money as I could. There we go. Fulfill, achieve is right. Uh, did I spell it wrong? The world is coming to an end. Thus, comma, comma, comma. Don't forget your commas, guys. Commas, commas, commas at the beginning. Usually when we use these words, we need a comma. Uh, thus, I take advantage of each day. Ooh, good combination, Angela. Very nice. Uh, Gertie said, thus, I live up every single day. Live up as possible as well. Take advantage of. That's a nice combination, right? If the world was ending, you would want to do that. You would want to take advantage of. Kind of like enjoy. Use the time very well. Take advantage of something. And you can also take advantage of somebody, which is kind of a negative thing, which is interesting. One is good and one is bad. Uh, take advantage of the day. Take advantage of the sun, if you get it. Uh, so collocation, I guess. Uh, use time well. There we go. Nice one. Okay, a few more. And then we're going to get to the last one. Hello from Nigeria. Hello, sissy. Great name. Uh, this I have to get ready for. Okay, let's do a few more here. Angela Hadwars. Uh, we just have to enjoy our lives. L-I-V-E-S. Because of we, you should also use lives. L-I-V-E-S. And live in a way that, not what, in a way that we really want. Uh, Vinny, thus I have to, I have to get ready for it. Vladimir, thus we shouldn't go to work. It's true, if the world was any. Uh, was it in the past, my sentence? Or is it in the present? Uh, past, so if the world was ending, uh, thus we shouldn't, oh yeah, it is still shouldn't. It's a weird one. Uh, okay, all right, I'm gonna jump ahead to my very last one. Because, oh, oh, there's a couple more. Now nah, let's just do eight. Last one is number eight. So here we go, because I wanted to introduce one more thing today. So here we go, last one before we get into how to do all this stuff. So imagine you died and you're dead. So now I'm dead. And the story that I just told you was about my life. So in conclusion, I would like to say that. So imagine you, imagine you live and you live until you're old and then you die. But before, just before you die, you want to tell people something. What would you say? So you say, you know what? So imagine you're giving a talk to somebody. You say, you know what? So I told you my story about my life. But now I'm dead. So in conclusion, I just want to tell you, I would like to tell you now, what would you tell someone about life? All right? What would you say? I would like to tell you, I would like to tell you that life, that's a good one. I would like to tell you that life, what would you say? Interesting topic. Maybe difficult to comprehend, but <laughs> go ahead, do your best. Oh, Lolly, always dependable. Yes, so now I'm dead in the story of my life. This was about my life. And in conclusion, I would like to tell you that, okay, I've changed my answer. I would like to tell you that, I would like to say, bring me a beer. Okay, fine, let's use Lolly's answer. I would like to say that I need a beer, or I would like to some, someone to bring me a beer. In conclusion, I would like to tell you that life is short. It is. So what does that mean? It means enjoy yourself. So you should enjoy yourself. I agree. Uh, Sissy likes learning languages. That's okay. Well, that's, that's a good conclusion as well. If you liked doing something in your life, you can say that. Life is short. Everybody seems to have this answer. So if life is short, you need to enjoy yourself. Do everything you want, you know, as much as you can, because I think that's going to lead you to true happiness. It's a joke. Okay. In conclusion, I saw the light. Oh, all right, nice, that's good. I'd like to say that I enjoyed past every moment of my life, which was given to me. Albina, I would like to tell you that life is people. 
comma, need people only. You need people only. Good. That would work. Nice one. I like that. I like that answer. That's a good answer. Uh, Muad, I would like to, I would tell you that life is nothing without love. Mm, nice one, Muad. Very nice. Lali, I would like to tell you that life is unfair. I don't want to die. <laughs> yes, very nice. Also good for Lali. Very nice. Ali, live your life with happiness and live as you will die tomorrow. So enjoy as much as you can. I like it. Amira Salan, I would like to say that in the end, comma, nothing really matters but family. Mm, nice message. I like it. That's a good one too. Faiza, every single moment, live with your family. Make nice souvenirs, maybe memories, maybe mem memories with your friends. That works. Safi, I would like to say that do what you love, love what you do, life is short. Very nice. Oh, I like this. This is a nice one. This is, you got a wise, we got a wise group here, some good life wisdom. Uh, Zineb, that you will not get out alive. Somebody's going to be killing you. Those are like little teeth you got there. What's going on? You little vampire. Gertie, uh, in conclusion, enjoy all, <laughs> it's difficult to say, enjoy all the enjoyable moments, the enjoyable moments in your life and cry when you have to cry. All right, maybe I'll go for a little cry later. Very nice. Uh, a couple more and then we're going to jump in and do this. Uh, I would like to tell you that if you want to live happily in life, you need to be positive and hope the best for others. Oh, great. Good karma, right? Vlad, that my life was not in vain. I, I brought up, brought, not grew up, I grew up, but parents bring their children up. <coughs> so the subject changes. I grew up, but my parents brought me up. So a little bit different there. I brought up my children, built the house, and planted a lot of trees. That's a great idea. I actually have that idea, Vlad. I think before I die, and maybe next year, maybe soon, I want to go out into the wilderness somewhere in Canada, and I want to plant like 1,000 trees. And I think if I plant 1,000 trees, maybe that helps me to give back to you know all that I've taken. It seems like a nice idea. What do you guys think about that? If you, if you think before you die, maybe go plant 1,000 trees, if everyone did that, we'd, we'd have too many trees. We'd have a tree problem. But that's a nice idea, right? You kind of give back what you've taken from. I like it. OK. There is no time to regret. Faiza, reg regret nothing. OK. Uh, so here we go. Let's go here. I'm going to jump in. So let's jump into this grammar challenge. So please go to number two. We're going to talk about all these things. So today, this is what you're going to learn about. Uh, <laughs> maybe plant fruit producing trees. Sure. Maybe there's a lot of trees you could that are pretty useful that people enjoy, especially in Canada. Lots of trees to grow. All right, so here we go. Today we're going to talk about sentence connectors and conjunctions. Boom, big words for results and effects. Now, you know how to do a lot of these things already. I'm just going to show you that uh, there's a lot of similarities. So let's start with number one. So I'm going to make it real easy for you. I like to simplify things for my students. So number one is this. Look at sentences 1 to 10 in the warm-up. What is the connection between all of those words that we talked about in the warm-up? So if I go back, scroll back up, it says, uh, so as a result, as a consequence, as a consequence of my hard work, therefore, thus, hence, in conclusion. What do all of those words basically mean? Give me a nice, easy word. Yes. Yes, they all, they all do. Okay, let's put two words. I'm going to give you, I'll give you an example. Yes, they do mean results such as so. This word, so. Okay, so this is literally, so if you were ever confused, like what do those words mean, hence and thus, and all those things, there we go. All of those words basically mean so. Okay, it's just different ways to use them, different positions. Sometimes we use them in the middle of a sentence. Sometimes we use them at the beginning of a sentence with a comma. Don't forget your commas. But basically, all of them we use to talk about results, which basically means so. Good. Next one. Take a look at this one. Uh, here we go. So yes, it is a conjunction. Do all these words have the same meaning? So if I say this one, for example, number one. I drank too much. Consequently, I made a fool of myself. Uh, next one, number two. I drank too much. As a consequence, I made a fool of myself. And number three, I drank too much. In consequence, I made a fool of myself. Are they? Are these things all the same? 
uh, because and so. Yes, so Faiza, if you do confuse because and so, you can go back to one of the streams that we did here, I believe it was last week or the week before, and we did because. So go back and watch that stream, and then you'll be right. You'll be right. Okay, so there we go. Uh, are they all the same? I drank too much, consequently I made a fool, as a consequence and in consequence. Are they the same? Do they have the same meaning? Or are they a little bit different? We got yes, we got no. Yes, Rodrigo, we know. You've explained that many times. You live in Australia and you're a big fool, <laughs> fool bogan. Yes, as a consequence of living in Australia, you are a big fool bogan. Uh, the answer is yes. Consequently, as a consequence, in consequence, same. Same, same, same. So the answer is yes. They all have the same meaning. They're just a little bit different. Yes, thank you. You got it, Lolly. They're all the same. Okay, so let's go again. Let's go a little bit uh, into the next section. Let's do this one. Here's a few new, few new words for you. Do hence, thus, and therefore have the same meaning? Yes, not yeah. Well, yeah, we're speaking, Gertie. We're speaking. Nobody's writing. You can use yeah. Hell yeah, you can use that as well. Hell yes. Uh, do thus and hence and therefore have the same meaning? What is the answer? Depends on the context. Does it? Does it? Hence and thus? Let's Google that, shall we? Let's see. I don't think it does. Let's check it out. Hence. Meaning. OK. Hence, in consequence, consequently, as a consequence, for this reason. Ooh, interesting. Therefore, thus. So thus is there. Yeah, OK. Hmm. And there's a few more. So you can see I've actually encountered a few more. So if you go to Google, Google will tell you a lot, right? There's actually more. Um, because of that, yeah, you can also use because in that one. Ugh. But I'm not going to introduce those words because I don't want to confuse anybody. So because is because, and we're going to use these words to talk about results. We're going to use because to talk about reasons, and we're going to use these words more often to talk about results. And that way, there's no confusion because we're keeping those words kind of separate. OK, so basically, uh, they're pretty much the same. All right, so let's bring that back. Here we go. OK, so basically the same. Hence, thus, therefore, they have the same meaning. Let me add, I want to add a question here. What do we need to use after these words? And where should we use? Two questions. Where should we use these words? And you can look at the warm up. So let's ask these two questions. So here's number one, and here's number two. Thank you, Gertie. Yeah, hence, it, it's very formal. Uh, so where should we use these words? The answer is the beginning of a sentence. We say period, thus, comma, and that's the next question answer. There we go. Beginning of a sentence, yes. What do we need to use after these words? Comma, 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 comma. A lot of people weren't using their commas and that. Mm, anyways, use commas. OK. So are they used? Do all these words have the same meaning? Yes, are they used in the same way? Yes, basically they're the same. You can say thus and hence, and what was the last one? Therefore. OK, and let's add another question. Uh, which ones are very formal? Because there is a little bit of a difference here. So next one, it's the same question. So thinking about hence, thinking about thus, and therefore, which ones? Which ones are really formal? And which ones are kind of everything? Yeah, hence and thus, Dale's got it. I believe you're right. I believe it's hence and thus. Those ones are, are quite formal. Uh, I'll put that on the document there. Hence and thus. Therefore, you know, some people use this. <sighs> it really depends how you speak, right? Some people speak formally. But I think if you chose, if somebody said, like, which ones are really formal, hence, Nobody speaks hence. Some people speak therefore, but and not too many people speak thus. Those ones definitely sound a little more formal, a little more academic, maybe better for writing. Uh, sometimes are between commas or semicolon. Could you explain why? Oh, you just asked me the worst question, Brahim. So yes, some people will use those words hence and thus in between commas or a semicolon. Um, I think semicolons are not really used very often anymore. So most of the time, you could use it. Uh, I think most of the time, it's going to start a new sentence. But I have seen some, some people using it in the middle. Uh, I've seen, 
some people said that if you, you, if you write a sentence, uh, so for example, be, it rains a lot in Vancouver and thus comma. Some people do that. They'll use and thus comma and then finish the sentence. With a semicolon, I don't really use semicolons very often. I don't think they're really necessary. I would just start a new sentence. Uh, unless you wanted to use a sentence where both of the ideas, what you want them to be in the same sentence, and then sometimes you can use a semicolon, and then you could probably use thus in the next part. Does that make sense? So, but semicolons, I don't really use them very much, so I'm not the best person on it. Okay, so Sean's got a video. There you go. You could check out Sean's video where he gives you a schools you on the use of uh, semicolons. There we go. Any others? What else? Hints means the result just mentioned. Yeah, so again, it's so, right? All of those are the same. In consequence is informal. Good question. So we're going to get to that, Amir. We're going to try to clear up most of these, which ones are formal and which ones are not. Uh, hang on to that question. I'm going to try to answer it as we go on. Next one. Uh, so here's the next question. Let's jump into this one. What words, for example, a noun, a verb, an adjective, can we put after these sentence connectors? And when I say sentence connectors, I mean hence and thus and therefore sentence connectors. You connect another sentence to it. Uh, the question is, oh, okay, sorry, hold on, give me a second. Here's the first sentence connector. These are all, we're, all we're talking about sentence connectors. I just didn't organize it very well. So here's another one that you can do. So you can see it's a little bit different. No, it's not a verb. Well, yes, what kind of verb, Ali? So these ones, you say, as a result of something, or as a consequence of something. What is something? What kind of words can I use? Dale's got one. One of those answers is a noun. As a, uh, as a result of the rain, as a result of my hard work. Those are nouns. So we can use a noun. That's true. And what's the second answer? Uh, adjective? No adjectives. A gerund. Thank you, Faiza. There we go. Uh, ing verb. Ver I'll put verb plus ing, and it means gerund. Right? It's the same idea. So if you don't know that word, they're the same thing. You can say a verb ing or a gerund. In English, we have a word for that. Okay, so there you go. So you can say as a result of studying, as a consequence of working, or as a consequence of my job, or the job. Okay, so you can use a noun or you can use an ing verb because of the preposition of. So if there's a preposition of, in, on, under, one of those words about, usually the ones are with or about, you can use a noun or uh, ing verb. Next one. Next question here. When do we use these words? For example, in summary, in conclusion. This should be pretty easy. I think you know the answer. But I'm giving you, hopefully I'm giving you a few more. In summary, yeah, in conclusion, OK. In short, you can also say in short. Overall, you can say it as well. Given these points, that's another way to say it. All in all, and everything considered, yes. Summary is at the end. So basically, at the end of a piece of writing. When you want to finish your essay, when you want to finish some piece of writing and you want to give a conclusion, yes, so it's not in the middle of the sentence. It, like here, but it's kind of like, that's why I did the end of your life. It's really, there's a story, there's a story, and then boom, in conclusion. So you've all, you probably all know that, but I just wanted to introduce a few new ways to use it as well. All right, so let's look at that. So one of the questions was about formal and informal. Let's look at this next section. I want to show you a couple, a couple more. So here's a few more. Are these ways also OK? So look at these three. So here's one, two, three. And then here's more. Yes, to paraphrase, to summarize, both of those ideas were good. So are those also OK? You're right, overall. Hmm. They're tricky. There are a few words that you probably wouldn't use, but I, I feel like overall is still one where you can use it to mean in conclusion. But if you said, uh, for example, one of the ones I talked about today, we were talking about this. If you said generally, generally wouldn't sound the same as in conclusion. But overall, it's like the big picture. It's kind of a summary. Overall, mm, in conclusion, I want to say overall, oh. Mm, good question. That's a good one. Let's let's check it out, shall we? Let's ask Google. Might be right about that one. Overall meaning. Let's see. Let's see if we get synonyms. 
Ooh, you know what? You're right. I agree. Uh, let's take that one out. Uh, Mudasser's got it. I think overall, yeah, I think I agree with him. What does it say here? Generally, in general, speaking all together. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know what? I'm going to take that one out. Uh, let's take out overall because you're right. That one doesn't belong there. Overall just kind of means generally or usually. You're right. Uh, okay, all in all. Let's take out that one as well. Given these points. Uh, ooh, man. I mean, there might be a few that I have to take out. Ooh, okay. I might have taught you some bad stuff here. Let's see what all together, all in all. Okay, I'm going to have to take out a few of these because it's actually the wrong mini. Thank you for pointing that out, Mudasser. See, le everybody's learning every day. So I'm going to take out a few of these. Given these points, I might take that one out. Everything considered. I'm just going to keep the ones that I know are safe. So I'm taking out a few of those. So I'm just going to stick with those short ones here. In summary, in conclusion, in short, because the meaning is correct to summarize a writing. Okay. Uh, so last one. Uh, which one are which ones of these are formal or informal? Um, there's not much of a difference, really. So, which ones are definitely formal, and which ones are definitely informal? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. So answers, what do you think? So if you look at these ones, in summary, to summarize and to sum up. There's not a lot here, but let's, uh, in summary is formal. Yeah, it kind of sounds formal, doesn't it? In conclusion would probably be the same way, formal ones, right? To summarize, there we go, Gertie's got it. So basically the only one that's really informal is the last one here. To sum up is kind of informal because it sounds like a phrasal verb. Wake up, shut up, sum up. It sounds more like something we would use for speaking. So this one we would say is definitely informal. So we'll keep that one there. Uh, and the other ones, yeah, I mean the other ones are probably more on the formal side. It sounds like writing, doesn't it? In summary, in conclusion, to summarize, to conclude, those all sound like you're doing some writing. But to sum up could be a presentation. You know what I mean? If you were giving a speech to someone and it, or to a group, and maybe it's not a formal presentation, maybe it's just kind of a casual talk, but you can use words like that. What's up, exactly, good. Okay, so there we go. There's a little introduction to that. So here's what we're gonna do. We got a little bit of time left. I would like you guys to use all of these things. I would like you to use all of these words. And what we're gonna do is we're going to look at stupid people. And I would like you to use one of these words to describe the stupid person. And if it's a formal one, try to speak formally. And if it's not so formal, like so, try to speak a little bit more casually. So let's go, shall we? Let's take a look. And you guys are going to look at the photo. And then I want you to, I want you to write a sentence using some of the words that we studied today. So let's see what we got. So stupid people, uh, what was it? It was people doing, no, it was people doing stupid things. So here we go. That all comes up very quickly. So here we go. Let's take, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is a bad idea. Really bad idea. Oh my God. Okay. That's tough to look at. But anyways, there's the sentence. Uh, go ahead. Oh my God. That's the worst idea ever. So please take that horrible, horrible photo and please uh, try to make a, ooh, make a result. Okay, so why are they doing that, <laughs> for example? That's horrible. Give us a sentence with so as a result. Eww, I also feel, oh, okay, anyways, go ahead, do your best. Um, so for example, yeah, it hurts my eyes too. Should I change it? Should I change this one? Do you guys want to do this one or should I do it? So you can't always choose, it makes bad mess. Flip him, flip him please, yeah. Things you can see in Australia all the time, yes. Bogan, Bogan lifestyle, right, hashtag Bogan. Uh, sum up is recap. Yes. Oh, good one, Madaster. Madaster with the with the language today. Very nice, buddy. Yes, you could do that, couldn't you? To recap. Uh, so let's put that one in its own category, but I'll put it next to sum up. To recap. You're right. That is a good one. You could use that in an informal way as well. Okay. Don't try it at home. Okay. Let's maybe let's do another one. Uh, if you would make a sentence about that one, good for you. Uh, Oh my, let's see what else we got here. So, all right, well, here's another stupid idea, but I have less problem looking at this one. So can you guys please take a look at this one? And so basically there was a problem, and as a result, this happened. 
Uh, or you can make a sentence about the future. What do you think is going to happen? Okay, so here we go. This is your sentence. So what would you say? Why is he using this this setup? Why is he why is he propping up the car with wood? So please go ahead and try to make a sentence. Why is this happening? Yeah, very smart guy. Stupid people doing stupid things. It's uh, always interesting to look look at. Uh, so what would you say here? Why is this happening? So no 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 happened. Some problem happened. So as a result, this this situation is happening. So go ahead, use anything you've learned today as a result, uh, as a consequence of, right? You could use a little bit more difficult example as well. So what do you got? Who's got one? Maybe I'll do the first one. As, uh, as a result, the car, okay, so you gotta remember, when you do this, you gotta do two, sen you gotta do two sentences to do it, right? Because you're gonna have the first part of the sentence, for example, this one, you need two parts. It was the worst night of my life, so something happened. Or it was the worst my night of my life, new sentence, as a result, something happened. So you really need two situations. You need the cause and effect. This is basically what we're talking about is cause and effect. So go ahead, give a cause, and then give an effect, and try to explain what happened there. So here we go, back to here. So what do I got? So don't forget to do two pieces. Um, so as a result of, so, okay, so let me do the first one. Let me help you out. Mikey, I'm going to name this guy Mikey, lost his job as a mechanic. As a result, he decided to start his own his own car garage as cheaply as possible. Boom, there we go. So you can see you got the part one, part two. Mikey lost his job as a mechanic. As a result, he decided to start his own car garage as cheaply as possible. So there we go. So don't forget to put two parts. Uh, what else we got here? Amir, he's using these sticks. Thus, he might end up dead. That's true. Yeah. You might end up with thus. Don't forget a big T on your thus as well. Uh, what else we got? So again, Gertrude, don't forget you need two parts. You need a first sentence and then, because remember, it is cause. I should have probably said that at the beginning. We are looking today at cause and effect. This happened, so this happened. So we'll try to do that. Dale's got one. A car mechanic was uh, rectifying an automobile. Maybe just fixing, fixing up or repairing or something like that. As a result, comma, he decided to quit this extreme activity. Mm, not quite, not quite there. So a car mechanic was fixing an automobile. An automobile. As a result, no, no. Remember, it's got to be a cause. This happened, so this happened. That's what it's got to be. No, 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 it's gone. No, no, no. Okay, let's go back one more time. Let's look at this again. I'm going to look at another. We're going to do one more here. Ew, what's happening there? Okay, drunk people. Here we go. Here we go. Rodrigo will love this one. Okay, see what's going on here? There we go. Okay, Judith has got one. Vinny seems to have one. Okay, so remember, guys, two parts. You've got to have the first sentence and then the second sentence or the second idea every time. I think Vinny's got one. Vincent was driving along along the way, period. Hence, comma. His car got a punch. Mm. Judith, the guy was out of money. The guy was out of money. Period. Don't forget your period. Big A. As a result, comma. He was used his sage, which has worked very well. Mm. JB's. A car mechanic was fixing a car in a dangerous way. As a result, his boss fired him. Thank you, JB. You got it. Nailed it, buddy. Raheem, the mechanic, hmm? the mechanic isn't working. As a result, I decided to fix my car myself. The mechanic isn't working. Could be. It's kind of working, but just in a dangerous way. As a result, I, oh, okay. Ah, okay, that's what you're trying to say. So the mechanic wasn't working when I went to his shop. As a result, I decided to fix the car myself. That's okay. 
Angela, Peter lost his mechanic tools. There you go. He lost his, uh, I don't know, he lost his equipment. Uh, as a result, do a new sentence, period, and then new sentence. As a result, he's fixing the car with what he found. Ali, he's not a mechanic. As a result, okay, guys, guys, let's back it up. Okay, let me let me do this. I'm gonna put it in the chat. Period. I'm gonna do it. period, and then as a result, sorry, I'm gonna I'm, I'm giving you the naughty treatment here. That and then we gotta use commas. Don't forget your commas and your periods. You make your teacher crazy. Okay, and big A's, big A's. You also have to use big A's. Ah, okay. Don't forget to use those things. Okay, if you're going to use as a result, period, as a result, comma, and then blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Punk rocker was <laughs> drunk. Uh, look, he kind of looks like a punk rocker, or at least a punk. Uh, a punk rocker was drunk. As a result, the, bl the band has to play without a drummer. Boom. Like it. Uh, Thomas, the reckless man was fixing his car. Thomas! Thomas! Periods, man. Periods, and then a big A. Oh. See, see what happens when you when you don't don't follow the rules. The teachers go the teachers go crazy. The man was drunk, so he slept on the ground. That's true. He did decide to do that. Faisal, he was just like, I'm going to take a nap here. This looks like as good a place as any other. All right, let's see what else we got. Let's do one more, shall we? What's going on there? Oh, that's kind of fun. Oh, this is a good one. I like this one. Let's do this one. Kind of funny. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. This one. I like this one. This could be an Australian problem. Rodrigo, would you like to weigh in on this? On this one, this is a good one. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, let's do a few more of the last one. The man was drunk, so I slept. Uh, Muad. As a result, he works with the wrong method. Okay, and again, Muad, you need two parts to that sentence. You need a first part and a second part. Otherwise, you can't you can't use this grammar. Uh, Gertrudis, this guy probably does not have money to fix the car. As a consequence, thank you for using commas. He will go to go to the emergency room. Yeah, or he will be yeah something like that. Vinny, the man was celebrating. Ah, Vinny. Periods, man. Portuguese speakers. I'm sure you're from. I'm sure you're from Brazil. I'm just guessing, because Portuguese speakers never use periods. Periods. They always use commas, commas, commas. No commas today, for inconsequence. And it's not in inconsequence. You can say inconsequence, but use a period, man. Use a period and then a comma, and then you'll make me super happy. Uh, Mudasser. He was trying to fix his car on his own. Oh, Mudasser, you as well, buddy, period, as a result. I give up, guys, I give up, I give up, I can't, I, I, I'm out, I'm out, you win. No periods, no com no, no commas. Ah, be still, my teacher heart. Okay, maybe I failed today, I seem to have, seem to have missed, the points didn't get through, but anyways, that's okay. All right, I might have to stop it here. Anyways, you got it. Uh, yes. As a result, okay. As a consequence, yes. It's okay, Gertie. Forgive you. You were doing it all right. You were okay. You were good. Uh, okay. <laughs> just, I am. I'm gonna just cry. Teachers, teachers out. Okay. So the lesson of the day. I tried. I tried to teach. Yeah, I will. I'm gonna put some put some stuff in that coffee. So please go back here, if you can do one thing for me today, go back and look at the way that I, I did the sentences and see how sometimes I used a big A and I used a period and used comma. Okay, I did my best, you can't win all of them, so here we go. Uh, no worries. Just go ahead, go back, take a little look, see how it was done. Uh, please use your commas, please use your periods and then do it in the future, thank you, that's all that I ask. Okay, perfect. We made it through. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that maybe cleared up a few little things. Basically, all of these words are the same, and that is how you can use them. Some, some they go at the end of an essay, some they go in the middle of a sentence, some they go at the beginning of a sentence. That's it. That's everything I wanted to do. So stupid people doing things, stupid things. That's it for Wednesday. And we'll see you guys tomorrow where we'll have a new and exciting topic for you to do. That's it for me. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Bye-bye, crew, and we'll see you next time. Have yourselves a great day. See you tomorrow. Big hugs.